Again, welcome to computer architecture class. In this lecture, we are going to explain the general functions and the structure of a digital computer. So we start with the computer architecture and uh, computer organization. Now, often there's a distinction made between computer architecture and also computer organization. A computer architecture normally refers to those attributes of a system visible to a programmer, or we can put it in another way, those attributes that have a direct impact on the logical execution of a program. So a term that is often used interchangeable with computer architecture is the instruction set architecture, that's the ISA. Normally the ISA defines the instruction format and the instruction opcodes, registers, instructions and data memory, the effect of executed instructions on the registers and the memory. Also an algorithm for controlling the instruction execution. So that's again the instruction set architecture. Now the computer organization refers to the operational units and their interconnection that realize the architectural specifications. So example of architectural attributes, including the instruction set and the number of bits used to represent various data types. The example can be numbers or characters. Also the IO mechanisms and techniques for addressing memory. So organization attributes can include those hardware details transparent to the programmer. And such as again, the control signals or interfaces between the computer and peripherals, and also the memory technology use. So, for example, it is an architectural design issue whether a computer will have multiple instruction. Also, it is an organization, organizational issue whether that instruction will be implemented by a special multiply unit or by a mechanism that makes repeated use of add unit of the system. So organizational decision may be based on the anticipated frequency of use of the multiply instructions and the relative speed of the two approaches and the cost and the physical size of a special multiply unit. Now, a prominent example of both this phenomena is the IBM system uh, 370 architecture. This architecture again was introduced 1970s, first introduced in 1970, and also included number of models. So a customer with modest requirements could buy a cheaper, slower model and if demand increase, later upgrade to more expensive, faster model without having to abandon the software that, that, that had already been developed. Now, over the years, IBM has introduced many new models with improved technology, again, to replace the older models. Also offering customers greater speed, uh, lower cost, or both. Now, the structure and the function of a computer system. Here, we, we can say that a computer is a very complex system. So a contemporary computer can contain millions of electro elementary electronic components, if not billions of uh, logic circuits, etc. Now, the key is to recognize the higher ranking nature of most complex systems, including the computer, also, the higher ranking system is a set of interrelated subsystems, each of the later in turn higher ranking structure until we reach some lowest level of elementary subsystems. So, again, the higher ranking nature of a complex system is very essential to both their design and also their description. So the designer need only deal with a particular level of a system 
at the time. At each level, the system consists of a set of components and their interrelationships. Now, the behavior at each level depends only on a simplified, structured characterization of the system at the next lower level. So now a structure, we can say that a structure that is the way in which the components are interrelated or relate to each other. Then a function will be the operation of each individual component as part of the structure. Now, in terms of description, we have two choices. Let's say starting at the bottom and building up to complete description or beginning with the top view and decomposing the system into its subparts. So again, a computer system will be described from the top down. Here we are going to begin with the major component of computer and describing their structure and functions. Then we proceed to, again, lower parts of the higher rank here. So first functions. Yeah, we say generally there are four basic functions that a computer can perform. First is the data processing. And the data may take a wide variety of forms and the range of processing requirement is broad. However, we shall see that there are only a few fundamental methods or types of data processing. And we also have data storage both short-term and long-term. So a computer must temporarily store at least data that are being processed by the CPU. This data would normally store in the memory. Also, there are at least a short-term data storage function. Also equally important, the computer performs a long-term data storage function. And files of data, are stored on a computer for subsequent retrieval and also updates. And the third will be the data movement. So a computer operating, operating environment consists of devices that serve as either the source of destination, either the source or the destinations of data. So we may have the input output where data are received from from or delivered to a device, it can be a peripheral device that is directly connected to the computer. So when a data received from a from or delivered to a device that is directly connected to a computer, we may call process as input and output or IAO. And the device is referred to as periphery also. Now, when a data are moved over a longer distance to or from a remote device, this process is called data communication. So data communication is when data move over a long distance to or from a remote devices. And the last function will be the control. So within a computer, a control unit manage the computer resources and also orchestrates the performance of its functional part in response to, again, those instructions. So this is example given here. We can see our computer. At the top diagram, we have the input output or the IO module, the main memory. We also have the CPU. And this also are connected the IO main memory and CPU are connected using the bus or system bus. Now, within the CPU also, we can see in the diagram, we have registers. Registers are memory inside the CPU. Also, we have the arithmetic logic unit, which perform most of the arithmetic operations and also the logical operation. Then we have the control unit, which again, manages or control, or I would say the main coordinator of the system how data flow in and out from the register, processing, et cetera. Again, the future lectures, we may go details discussing about CPU operant. Also, we have a special element, which is called the program counter. Program counter normally will point to the next instruction 
that the CPU will execute. In this case, the ALU will execute. Now, as we said, within the control unit also, we have the sequencing logic, the control unit and registers and decoders, and also control memory. Now, the computer, in order, normally we have what we for, what we call, call the fetch, decode, and execute. So we normally CPU can access data from me memory, either cache or the main memory. So when we get the data, first thing we do is to decode it. And then the code is done by the control unit before we execute the program. And we will go details about this in our future lectures. So next is there are four main structural components of a computer, as we saw. Again, the CPU, the main memory, the I.O., and also the system interconnections. So the CPU stands for central processing units. This controls the operation of the computer and also perform its data processing functions. The main memory stores data, uh, mostly temporary. Then we have the input and output module. And this module or devices moves data between the computer and its external environment. Then we have the system interconnection. And this will be, again, some mechanism that provide for communication among the CPU, main memory, and the I.O. So a common example of a system interconnection is by means of a system bus, which consists of a number of conducting wires to which all the other components are attached to. So next is the major structural components. Here we see the most interesting and, and in some ways the most complex component is the CPU. Is the CPU is the major structural component are uh, the following. The major structural component of a CPU uh, control unit, which again control the operation of the CPU and hence the, mm. the computer. Then we have the arithmetic logic unit. We, again, this component perform the computer data processing function, both arithmetic and uh, logical operations. Then we have registers. Registers are smaller memories inside the CPU most of the time. And it owes the data or the instruction that the computer is uh, the CPU is executing. Then we have the CPU interconnection. So this will be some mechanism that provides for communication among the control unit, the arithmetic logic unit, and also the registers. Next, we talk about the multi-core computer structure. So first we have our central processing unit. Now, contemporary computers generally have multiple processes. And this again enhance uh, improve the performance of the computer in terms of speed. So portion of a computer that fetches and execute instruction, which is the CPU, and also consists of an ALU, as we said earlier, control unit and registers, also referred to as a processor in a system with a single processing unit. Now, when it comes to the concept of a core, this will be an individual processing unit on a processor chip. So a core may be equivalent in functionality to a CPU on a single CPU system. And also other specialized processing units, such as the one optimized for vector and matrix operations, are also referred to as cores. Also, we have a term processor. So this will be a physical piece of silicon containing one or more So the processor again is the computer component that interprets and also executes instructions. If a processor contains multiple cores, that's what we refer to. We refer to as a multi-core again processor. Next, we talk about a cache again. In this course, 
we have a special uh, chapter for Kashi memory. By here, we should just understand the concept that the Kashi memory is faster than the main memory because again, it's closer to the CPU. And we have three different, most computer designers have three different of cache, like level one, level two, level three. The smallest cache is the fastest because it's closer again to the CPU. And the second, level two, uh, faster than level three. Then level three is faster than the main memory because it's far from the, again, the CPU. So again, this is a, another prominent feature of contemporary computers, is the use of multiple layers of memory, called a cache memory. Now, between the processor and the main memory, cache is always located between the processor, the CPU, and the main memory. And cache memory is smaller and faster than the main memory. And also it's used to speed up memory access by placing it in the cache data from main memory that is likely to be used in the near future. Again, in our future, we're going to discuss about how we can map data from main memory to the cache. So that's an example of a diagram here. We can see Again, this this excuse me, this diagram is simplified view of a principal component of a typical multi-core computer. So most computers, including embedded computers in a smartphones or tablet, plus personal computers, laptop, and workstation, are all housed on motherboard. So motherboard is where we have all the components connected together. So now. Here we, we are zooming the boxes, uh, the chips or so the main memory. For example, this is our IO chips, that's main memory chips, processor, etc. controllers. Now within the processor chip, we may have as many, uh, here we have four calls. We also have the cache. Then within the core, we should have the instruction logic arithmetic logic unit, load and store logic, also instruction cache, uh, data cache. And so again, in the future, we may discuss all these components in detail. And this is also an example of IBM Z13 processor unit, chip diagram. So that will be the conclusion of this uh, lectures. Uh, again, this lecture we talk about the basic concept of again a computer. Uh, we focus more on the top view of what is a CPU, memory, cache, I/O device, etc. In our future lectures, again we may go details on each element. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.